OMG chat. Good morning. We're coming in on two wheels this morning. Coming in hot. Skirt. Whew. How are we doing? How are we doing? We just wrapped a podcast about 30 minutes ago. Mike and I started recording at 8 a.m. Eastern, my time. I had to set my alarm this morning, even though I've been getting up before my alarm. Um, so yeah, early alarm, early recording, early voice practice. Uh, it is hat day. It, it hasn't been hat day for a long time. Yeah, the hat is not for sale. <laughs> How's Mike? He sounds pretty rough, but I think he's starting to feel a little bit better. He, he is not in great shape. He's, he's still hurting. You'll hear it on the podcast. Like as soon as he logged in today, he's like, hey, Brad, how's it going? And I was like, ooh, you do not, you do not sound well. <laughs> you do not sound well whatsoever. Um, Mike got COVID on his trip to San Francisco and was stuck in a hotel room for essentially nine days and had a terrible, terrible time. Wasn't feeling well. Uh, definitely got sick um, and is still feeling, he's no longer testing positive, but he's still feeling the after effects of it and, uh, and of jet lag flying back from San Francisco to London as well. So he's just, he's just a mess. So uh, good on him for, uh, for recording today. I didn't, I told him we could, uh, we could figure it out and do, uh, do an alternate get an alt I could I could I could call the hotline and come up with a guest uh, go you mouse desk door mouse, door mouse desk and he still podcasted yeah he one part of him wants to get back into the routine um, one part of him wants to crawl back into the bed <laughs> so it's just how it goes it's just how it goes so yeah um, we talk about it at the beginning of the show today about how tough a time he's had so um, yeah Props to him for, for doing it today. That is why it was a Thursday recording, um, because his flight got pushed late on Tuesday that made him miss his connector to Dallas, so they had to spend Wednesday, or Tuesday night in Dallas, had to and didn't get to fly home till Wednesday. So it's just been a... Like, it's one of those trips that if it could go wrong, it did go wrong type of situation. So, yeah. So he got in last night, his time, um, and was able to record this morning. So uh, I was on standby. Kuda, big shout out to Adina. Holy moly. Definitely. Definitely. So, yeah. Um, if I'm even more just scatterbrained today than normal, it's because... I've already had like a whole show that I've done this morning and was, has been on with him for like an hour and a half at least. So, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll lock it in, in a minute here when we go to this, uh, unboxing that I've got today. Before I do that, (laughs) I need to make, for some reason, I feel like I'm missing something. I need to look at my schedule real quick. I feel, all right, let me check some things off the box. We got that done. We got that done. We got that done. Okay, we're not we're not too far behind. We're not too far behind today. I have a super important question. I have a Desmo. I think has a problem. If I blow near the clip, ink sprays everywhere. I did this because I think I'm accumulating accumulating ink in the cap closure. Okay, so could be. Step one is disassemble and thoroughly clean. All right. If you, if you haven't already done this, you need to start from a, a baseline of zero, right? Anytime we're trying to troubleshoot these problems. So clean everything out. Number two, that cap hole um, is when the pin is retracted is right over the nib in the breather hole of the pin. So you're making it worse. That's not, it's not an airtight seal in by any stretch of the imagination on that front end. Um, so if I took any pin and forced air through it, I'm going to cause a problem. So it's something to think about. Um, I don't know that you, I don't know that you really have a problem, but you need to not do that to see if you do have a problem. (laughs) If that makes sense. (laughs) Schmevelin with the gifted sub. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. That's a great color shirt on you. Thank you. I had to get some new t-shirts. Um, now that I can wear 
wear something uh, that's comfortable for me. So yeah, it's very good. So like where that clip hole is and where the nib sits under that is a hor- is like the worst spot to like try to do something like this on like yeah, like don't do like it's like the doc it's like the uh it's like the doc it's like the doctor, you know, assessment is like, you know, it hurts when I do this. Stop doing that. Brad has platinum fixed the feeders and the curious just cur- in the curious just curious. Um allegedly. I mean, that was a year and a half ago at this point. I don't even know. I haven't followed up on it. I didn't get mine swapped out. It wasn't bothering me. <clears throat> oh, you ink it red, then you ink it blue, and the first time I retract it gets purple, then you're not cleaning it well enough. You need to clean it better. And then you need to get into the, like, you need to make sure the water is getting behind that, um, the trap door. So take the ink out and take the nib unit out, then put the, put it back in. Um, you need to try to get the, uh, you need to try to get the uh, trap door open and shut when you're cleaning it to make sure you get out all of then soak it, do all that stuff. Cal Riddle, 38 months of sub in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's go. 38 months. That's a long, that's a lot of months. Yeah, I think you got to clean it better to, to, to find out what's the problem. Would it be safe to say the Cure Dust is not taken off like Platinum Hope? Yeah, I, I think it's safe to say that. I've covered that on the show a little bit. That I'm going to be disappointed if there's not a Cure Dust 2.0. Because that means they just failed spectacularly. And I don't want it to fail. For all the problems it had... And for all the not perfect that it is, I do not want that pen to fail because Platinum seems to be one of the, like, all of the Japanese company, pen companies are generally risk averse. And for Platinum to do that was a big deal. Um, and I don't want them, I don't want it to fail. The Cure DOS is awful. Um, I disagree. I had a different experience with it. The Cure Dice hump is what turns me off. Exactly. Yeah, it's not a it's not a great design. <laughs> but I enjoy it when I use it. I just don't use it enough because there are some technical technical issues. Morning all somehow spilled an eco goes full of Venta Harlequin all over myself this morning. Nice. Looks like Grimace took a shower after cleaning up. Excellent. Oh, you got the Prisma? That's a, such a good pen. They did a really good job on this. So we've shown this on uh, on stream before. If you haven't seen it, you should look away because you can't buy it. They did some really good photography here. That's a level of photography that I do not have. Did they release a version 1.1 with minor changes? No, I think they just had to mix. I think they just had to fix the feed. I don't think there was ever like a model change. I think a version... 1.1 would have had to have some technical changes. I think maybe they just fixed the feed, but I can't even guarantee that they did that. I'm assuming they did because it was like a literal flaw. But uh, who knows? So sorry, sorry, I'm teasing you with this with this pen. Why can't I buy it? I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully they do another version. Not another. Not a a bigger run of this, which I don't think they'll do, but do, you know, some, I wouldn't mind an all black hardware or do a black pen with the anodized hardware. So they, they have some options. I don't know what they're going to do, but like there's at least two simple options you could do. And, uh, to, to continue this kind of idea, just make a black one, black, black kind of uh matte barrel. That would be, that would be great. Why do I tease y'all? I don't know. Sorry. I'm not very nice. Not very nice. You've met me. I'm not very nice. Uh, been looking for the r- right Leonardo Memento Zero for me, but it seems like they're only putting out Leonardo Memento Zero's Grandes these days. What's the difference between the two? Great question. Let me do a show and tell when I hook my camera up. Let's look and see, chat. Give me one second. Now that I have all the pins in here, we can do these kinds of things. This was the impetus for getting this pin storage in here too.
is mine at? If you were my Prisma, where would you be? Oh, right here, literally on the desk. So we got the Prisma. Let's look at these three. All right. So Leonardo did just come out with some standard editions. Um, what do they call the spaghetti ones with the, the sideways acrylics? So here's the size difference here. So to me, there's a pretty decent size variation. So this is the Memento Zero Grande, and I'll do some, I'll do some up close ones. This, uh, let me change this real quick. I have too many drinks out today. Did I show you this? Just kidding. Mosaico, yeah, Mosaico. So the Mosaico is like with this material, but then with the with it chopped up differently. So this is the standard size um, Leonardo Memento Zero, which I think is kind of the perfect size for me. Like it fits my hand really well. I need to find something else to compare it to. Hmm, do I have a Safari? What's a standard pen I could compare it to? All right, we'll look. But the compared to the grande okay so it's a little bit shorter almost a half an inch maybe not quite it's definitely wider it's really hard to see with these materials because they're throwing off the, the size measurements did you bring enough coffee for the class i did not looks like a pro gear slim this is much larger. This is as this is the size of a pro gear. I'll get a pro gear out. It might actually be bigger than a pro gear. So the reason the difference in size is because the Grandes have a built-in piston, while these the standards are a converter pin, right? So a little bit bigger, all the way around. So if you want me to like just tell you my preference, it's like I, I absolutely prefer this size over the Grande. Grande's a little bit too big for me. Just for general day-to-day -day use. I'll always reach for this. So let me get the um Yeah, so that's why they're bigger, right? This is a this is a piston filler, right? So it's just a traditional piston. The normal movement to zero is for sure bigger than a pro gear. Yeah, I agree. And I don't even have it out yet where these are the captured converter, right? So this is just, I don't ever use these, this part. Like it's cool to have, like I, I like the design, but it's just a traditional converter. <coughs> Excuse me. I might be coughing a bunch today because I've already talked a bunch this morning. My throat gets dry when I talk a bunch. So compared to, <coughs> excuse me. So this is a standard pro gear. And you can tell, like this is not the slim. This is the big one. Everyone I know is coughing today. I'm not going to say it. Hydrate, I will. Well, I have coffee and Coke Zero, both of them. I already went through two I already went through two cups of water this size today. I've done two of these with water in it. Now I felt like I needed a Coke Zero. But I also haven't had enough coffee yet. So we're doing that too. <clears throat> Posture check is always good when I'm up and down. <clears throat> I need throat spray? Probably. All right, so look. This is the bigger of the pro gears, and this is the smaller 
of the Leonardo's. I wouldn't call it the smaller of the Leonardo's. This is the standard Leonardo. <clears throat> and it's much bigger. It's actually bigger than I thought, Thunder Viking. I mean, the, the difference is bigger than I thought. So you can see, and I'll get these closer to the camera in just a second, but just a general idea. <clears throat> This is the pro gear size that I enjoy so much, and that's considered the, the larger of the two. Then you do this, you get into grande land, and it's a completely different animal, right? So there's some clear differences. But this feels great to me. This also feels great to me, but they are very different in size. So, good question about the Grande, but it is a piston filler, so that is part of the the difference. That's the main part of the difference, right? So it has to be a little bit bigger to fit the hardware in there. It's a little bit heavier, a little bit wider diameter. But then the standard Leonardo's, they're not small. Like this is the Pro Gear standard, right? Put a Pro Gear Slim up to that, and it's going to be really great difference. We can do that too. Do I have a, yeah, I still have a slim. Isn't this cool to have this box back here now? I think this is the only Pro Gear slim I own now. <clears throat> Sorry to, to tempt y'all with this. That is a, I hadn't, I didn't even realize the difference was that much. I wonder if they're making mostly grandes now because people like the pisons more. No, because they're like five to $600 where the, the lower end ones are like $200. Put it next to Rialo. I see you working. So, and then Chonk City over here. <clears throat> Are the Magico the only non-Grande MZ Pistons? I don't know exactly. What's the DNA? What's, is that the DNA Magico or whatever? I, they've come out with these new models and I'm not, uh, I'll admit to being not completely up to speed on them. The Sweet Love is my favorite Sailor Pro Gear Slim. Yeah, it's the last one I have. For sure, I love it. I use MZs and MZGs interchangeably, never had an issue with the sizes, yeah. Mosaico is a piston? Or did they do two sizes of that one? Fiori Grandes or pistons? Or all the Grandes pistons, maybe? So anyway, so there. There you go. There's your size comparisons. Bigger, The standard ones are bigger than I thought. I love these. This is just a really good shape. This is like kind of like a perfect shape for me. It's probably like the size of the halo. All right, let me put these back and let's start, uh, let's go through this unboxing because I'm really not positive what's in here besides a bunch of ink. I can't remember if I bought any pens from Van S or not. All right, what do I have here? Give me this and this and this and this. Mosaic, Mosaico is MGZ piston, I have one. Okay, I didn't know if there was a second model, like. What stand is that with your phone? I'm so glad you asked that question. So glad you asked that question. It is the Smand. You know, Bruce, I could pull Leonardo out the Van S. The Smand is so famous, it has its own command. The Smand command. Look at this thing. It's a pin case, phone holder, tray it is one of the coolest products ever made 
and you just put your accessories in here, zip it up, fold up the front. Boom. I'm on I'm on uh, Big Man's payroll. Look at this thing. Sick. How good is this? Thank you for asking. Thank you for Let me just do this and do this. Man, it's a Sman party in here every day. So glad you asked. We, if you were here yesterday, we, you could have won one. I gave one away. I think the small, the Sman deserves a PR 100. You know, I hadn't even considered reviewing that. Golly. That's a great question. Uh, Deldy, Sunstar. D-E-L-D-E, -E, I believe. Isn't it Sunstar Deldy? Deldy Sunstar? Yeah, Deldy. D-E-L-D-E. -E. They list them as Deldy or Sunstar. Line of combo yesterday, can I buy a Sman responsibly? Yeah, JetPins has them. All ca <laughs> Bork Ben Bork is my new favorite today. All caps when you smell the span spell the Sman's name. You know. Mm-hmm. Right? Rattler Gen. And it's probably Every time they buy, every time they make new ones, I buy them and give them away. They're that good. <clears throat> Thank you, Bruce. All right, let's unboxing a thing. So Van S pins. Sorry, I got a hair on my desk. It's gonna bug me now. I sh wish I didn't see this, but I do, and it won't come off. Sorry, hold that thought. Van S pins, strings and pedals. What's up? I don't think there's too much in here. It's a pretty light box, but I think it's packed because of ink, right? So there's some inks in here for sure. I can't remember if I ordered anything besides inks. So we're about to find out together. Um, disclosure, disclaimer. Um, I bought these products. Um, I did get a discount. And Van S Pens is a site sponsor of Penatic.com. So there's your disclosures. Hashtag disclosures. I did not buy all the ink. Although literally, right after this order arrived, Lisa Van S, Lisa of the Van S's, texts me, says, hey, you want to try these inks? I'm like, I literally just ordered a bunch of stuff. All right, we're gonna keep the packing list here because I'm gonna have to refer to it. All right, we're gonna we like we go blindly into these, so I'm gonna set it on the floor. That is not an ink. <laughs> that is not an ink, chat. <laughs> now I, re I do remember buying this. All the ink. So I saw these new the the, the bonds have been reviewed pretty well. And I saw these new acrylic-y ones um, that seemed to be like at a pretty decent price. They were like a hundred and a little over a hundred bucks, 120 bucks. And I was like, you know, we should review these because people are going to be asking about them because of the price point. Um, what's the name of this one? Fountain pen. That's the name of this one, fountain pen. Laban Rosa... Fountain pen in sky blue. The finish is called sky blue. The pen is called Rosa R O S A. Um, feels good. This is feels more like the um, Mayora. That is also similar to the Leonardo. This is in that category of feel and style, but at a much lower price point, like a hundred. I want to say these were one hundred nineteen. Is it on my list? Oh, no, 140. So, yeah, there you go. I thought it was a little bit lower than that. But, yeah, it looks like a Leonardo. If Leonardo and Mayora uh, had a baby, this is what it would look like. So it's got Leonardo, shape and style, Mayora, accoutrement, and hardware. 
um, cartridge converter, the norm. It would be named Delta, right? We're gonna have to try the new Deltas too. So yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of different pins DNA here, but I mean, lots of pin DNA. You know that the pin DNA family tree is pretty small. Let's let's be honest. This is interesting. This acrylic's interesting. It's got some really deep line divisions in here. That's kind of cool. It's not just all like a cracked ice type of thing. It's got some really, really cool swirls in here. Like you can't really pick up. Give it some separation. And I like that it's got a little bit of color change in here too. It's a little bit lighter green up in front. So yeah, bought this for review. What nib is on this? It doesn't say. Does it say on the back? Three. It says three. It's a fine nib. My solar orange writes very smooth. Nice. So yeah. So this will be um, for an upcoming review. It's just hair stuck in the acrylic. It's more like a snake. Or like an eel. Or, or like a worm. <laughs> Clip looks very similar to Rockstar, but gold. Does my Rockstar have a clip? I don't think my Rockstar has a clip, so I wouldn't know. So that clip looks like a lot of clips. That cat band looks like a lot of cat bands. There's a lot that looks like a lot of the things here. So these were newish. Um, someone will be reviewing this. Yeah, the nib looks good, like with the gold trim. And the two-tone nib, like I think all that that all works together. I like the two-tone. So I like the gold with the blue, but that silver um, helps. I think this I prefer the the two-tone than a solid gold nib in this case. How much? One forty. I was swearing it was less though. I was think I think they must have some that were one nineteen. Maybe I just bought a a fancier one. So anyway, this is uh, added to the review pile. Most everything that I bought is all upcoming review stuff. So that was the reasoning behind all of this. So there you go, I did buy, turns out I did buy a pen. All right, beverage. Um, let me do this real quick. Sorry, my screen was Blippity bloopiting. <clears throat> all right, all right, next. We're going in blind here. Hey, look, I lied again. Apparently I did buy pens. Did I buy any ink? Maybe I'm just lying to y'all. Maybe I only bought pens. What Lamy would I have bought? I literally just bought this last week. I have no idea what this is. I gotta think about this. Maybe it's some ballpoint. Like, I don't think it's a fountain pen. No, I've had all the new strawberries and cream. I've had plenty of those. No, this is from Van S. Pen, so it's not the Goulet edition. <laughs> I'm thinking it's some ballpoint. Okay, yeah, it is. It's the Aquamarine logo. Because these are, like, pretty inexpensive. Like, I wanted to give them a shout-out. For like a really strong ballpoint. Look look at this. You seriously can't recall one week? Hey, coming from a fellow old, you should know. <laughs> you should know. I knew it wasn't a fountain pen though. I just couldn't remember what it was. Look at that. Yeah, these are 12 bucks. Like, I need to put some love on this pen. Y'all may not like the Lamy ballpoint. Uh, ink cartridge. I happen to like them. Like this is a good pen, and I, I thought I thought the color was uh, I thought the color was pretty neat. Right, this is a real. If we put this in the Tiffany store window, they wouldn't even notice, and they could add two zeros to the pen. Right, it could be twelve hundred dollars if we put it in the Tiffany storefront. It's it's kind of that color. It is a satisfying click. Stream giveaway. 
Naper villain with the redemption. Let's go. I mean, I placed four shop orders all within the span of two days. <clears throat> so they pardon if they do run together a little bit. All right, we're not giving any of this away yet. So let's go into the ice box of happiness. That's a throw in the depths of my purse pins. Yeah, like this pin has a job and it's to like take a beating and keep on writing. Sorry, I keep, that is a good click. Am I driving y'all crazy yet? All right, let's do a giveaway. Give me some ice box. Give me some ice box of happiness emotes while I'm turned around thinking about what I'm going to do. Hmm. What is this? Oh, this is fancy. I don't remember what it is. Nice. Give away a Venta ink to Naper Villains to replace the spilled ink. <laughs> this is nice. Look at that. Look at that. What is it? Should we just give it away? I mean, it's a pen or a pencil. I don't know which. One of the two. Hey, Darrow. Glad you made it. Glad you made it. Let's do Mystery Roach Ring. It's one of the pens or pencils from the from when they did the red, blue, and green colorways. I'm almost certain. I just don't know if it's a pen or a pencil. My guess it's a pen, but it doesn't matter because those pens are sick. They are awesome. All right, let me put this away. Then we'll do mystery rotring. That it's it could also be an empty box. <laughs> I think there. I think it's not. But uh, let's do it. So we'll do a mystery rotring giveaway, and then we'll we'll open it up. Whoa! I just hit something here. All right, all right. We'll open it up here. Oh my gosh, y'all! Y'all gotta see this. <laughs> y'all aren't gonna believe this. Okay, so I have the uh, back end chat window here. All of the ice box of happiness turn into like Shrek ogre on my side. Check that out. I don't think there's any secrets in here. Can y'all see that? The ice box of happiness over here is like some Shrek ogre thing. That's hilarious. <laughs> I pulled this up. I was like, what is happening? That's the ice box of happiness emote in this chat. Smork, yeah. How funny is that? All right. Okay, let's do this giveaway. Okay, okay. I can't see. How do you get that on chat? I have no idea. Yeah, what is that Dormouse desk? It is a raid, an orc raid, yeah. Mystery, almost wrote mystery orc, Rotring. That's not how you spell Rotring. Mystery Rotring. All right. <clears throat> Exclamation point raffle to win a mystery Rotring. We'll open it up. Once we have a winner, we'll open it up. You don't have to be a member, a follower, a subscriber. You just have to be here. You have to be awesome and you have to be present to win. You have to say, hey, it's me. So I know that you're present. And then you have to email me your shipping address. You can live anywhere in the world, even Antarctica, which we haven't had an Antarctic winner yet, but I'm holding out hope one of these days. Who gets to judge if you're... If we're awesome, me. I'm the sole judge and jury. If Toby was in here, he could judge you. And and everyone would be... I don't know. He hates every, He hates people, so maybe you're not awesome. The shipping for that would be like 2000 I would like to try. We could try it. Someone has a contact at, the, uh, at one of the stations. Let me know. We'd have to send him a space pen, though. 
Awesomeness is required. It is required. That eliminates several of you. It sure does. Sorry, y'all. My apologies to those of you who are not awesome. You are eliminated. All right, you got about 20 seconds left. Yeah, the bot def definitely not a big fan of the Thunder Viking. <laughs> it's a pretty high bar. Don't make me come down there. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You can maybe train Toby to not hate people. I just noticed that a spoke design logo in your hat. Yeah, this is just like a uh, like a few off that Brian made. Like he made like four or five of them. I gave one away on stream once. Brian made them just as a sample. I did give one away. I wonder who won that. You feel pretty awesome. You look pretty awesome. F bullet. You won the hat, Naper Villain? Nice. That's a good hat. Metellion? I'm going to go with. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. Kirby loves everyone, but she will get excited and potentially barf on you. It's a slick hat. I'll talk to Brian. We're in the middle of like inventory shenanigans right now. It's just everything is just kind of in flux. Once we do that, maybe we'll do the hat. Maybe we can actually officially do the hats. Is that why Tony never enters? He's not awesome enough? That is factually correct. Caslon Bold Italic. Is that a font? Welcome, font. I appreciate you. Thanks for following. All right, let's pick a winner. Sage Plant. Sage Plant. You win the mystery rot ring. Rot ring. I don't need his hand-me-downs. Says the guy who emails me. He's like, hey, send me that. I don't have that one. No, yes way, Sage Plant. I feel like you're a new winner, new winner here. First time winner. We are on a run, chat. We are on a run of first time winners here, which we love. Nice. So email me, hello at pinaddict.com. You haven't done that in ages because I haven't made anything new in ages. <laughs> All right, we're gonna open it. We're gonna open it. Let me get this down. Email me, hello at pinaddict.com. your shipping address, and tell me your Twitch name or what you won. I'm out of Corgi butts. Actually, I have a different set of Corgi butts, but I'm trying to use the Corgi, uh, Corgi fronts uh, first. We still got a, another good couple weeks left in this one. We're going to open it now, yeah. I have a feeling it's either the blue or the green ballpoint would be my guess. It's the green ballpoint. These are really good. I love these. So this is like the olive green. Did they call this camo? Or what did color did they call this? They called it some like not exactly representative color. And it's the ballpoint version, which I think is really good. The green was the best color. They were, I like, I don't have any, they, they, were, they were all good. Like this one, it was like hard to pick favorites. Blue, I ended up keeping the blues for me and then gave away the reds and the greens. No, it wasn't army green. I don't think it even had green in the title. I want to say it was honestly, I think it was camo. But I, I could be wrong. I could be very wrong. Let's see if it's on here. Nope. You think it was camo too? Yeah. Because... It was because um, when they did it, all the images look up. All the images look black, right? I was like, "Why is this camo?" Yeah, the shade of green is perfect. It, the the green even looks better in person than it does on camera. Sage got a green pen. Thank you, Italiane. Bot knows what's up. Blessed bot. Blessed bot. All right, there you go. Yeah, because I remember it's like, why is this camo? It's black. Jet pins listed as camouflage green. Okay, so they did have green in the name. Camo green. Okay, cool. Because I think when we first saw the images, we were all wondering, like, why is this black pin called camouflage green? I have black, white, and navy. There's a limited yellow. Those. Ooh, yellow would be great. I don't know why I can't get this back in here. All right. 
Camouflage green. All right, thank you. Sage plant camouflage green. All yours. All right. Next up, probably going to be another pen in here, knowing me. All right, see your strings and petals. Nope, it's an ink. Ink of the year. Appetite. Is anyone going to tell me this isn't pronounced appetite? If you do, I'm going to ban you. I mean, it's appetite, right? About how much do those go for? The roach rings? 30 something dollars? 30 to 40 between 30. Oh, these might have been more. These might have been in the mid 40s, I think, because they were special editions or whatever. 35? Okay, 35. I couldn't remember. Are we swatching today? We are probably not going to swatch today just based on time constraints and how long I've already been on before this. But we might. I, I might get a bug and I have not set up for swatching, but we will. We might can wing it because everyone wants to know what color appetite is. So this will probably be a review ink. 36? Okay, that's great. Why do I feel like I paid more <laughs> than that? Really pretty. Oh, this would look good in the Le Bon. But I didn't even think about. It. I didn't even buy them together. I just bought it because it was new. Um, these are great bottles. I really like these bottles. Please let us know the color of your appetite. It is teal green. My appetite is teal green. I was apparently in a mood on these orders chat between this. And this, and this. Do you think I was in some kind of mood when we were doing some orders? And these are like review products. Like I try to branch out <laughs> when I order review products. Apparently I did a poor job this time. <laughs> Apparently. Oh, this is also Tiffany Inc. So if this is $1,200, you add two zeros on it. So, well, maybe just one zero for the ink. So this would be $280 at Tiffany. This would be $1,200. So yeah, there you go. Did they change the caps on these? I have, it's been a while since I bought an Edelstein. I don't remember this cap. I thought the caps were black and it feels funny. Plus the shirt, plus the hat, yeah. Like. Apparently, it was a whole thing I had going on. That's different, right? Somebody confirm. I am thinking of summertime. Baja Blast. Yeah. that so we got appetite if I have the appetite for it I might swatch it later they used to be black okay they feel different too they feel cheaper right Mike that was a mega oof oof that was a mega oof so we'll see I'm not gonna say no the ink of the years have different colors there you go Naper villain that's what we're looking for nice I did not know that. I must not have many ink of the years then. Thinking, what do I have? I have tanzanite, mandarin, and topaz. So yeah, none of those are ink of the years, were they? Those were all stock editions. So that's probably why I'm confused. Other than that's just my general mood is confused. That's it, neighbor villain. That makes more sense to me. They didn't when hubs were a thing. I'm not gonna lie, it feels cheaper. It feels like a cheaper plastic. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, Merlin, you're gonna cause problems in my head now. <laughs> All right, here we go. Are we calling this new? What are we calling? Re redesign? What are we gonna call this chat? 
redesign, relaunch, rebrand, re-anything. So, redo, yeah, reissue, repackage, reevaluate. Um, it looks cool though. I mean, come on. What's that squirmy on here? I mean, I don't, did this thing leak? What's going on here? This doesn't look like ink. Well, I guess it is kind of inky on the side. We have a paper towel here. Sepia. What color is sepia? <laughs> this might. Yep, it leaked. Not much, though. So a little leakage. This is a wild bottle. All right, we're going to have to hose this guy off. V ducks. I see what you did there. It is a cool bottle, so that's why we got it. But same inks, similar inks. I'm guessing opening the opening really does. The opening's much smaller than I I expected when I did this. I was like, oh, let's have a nice big. Oh, and can I even fit a pen in here? Because they have like the like the uh, the ink cup thing in here to help allegedly help with filling it. I'm not sure that's going to help very much. Even Viscont Visconti of all people, they have huge huge pens. Like, they're going to have, what is the shape of this thing? All right, I'm going in. All right. This is going to be a huge mistake, chat. Let's see if we can do it. Yeah, I can't get that out. I'm trying to get this out. Yeah. All right, I can't get it out. I don't have tweezers. How much are these? $35 for 50 milliliters. You know, I've paid more. <laughs> Not no good. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. But yeah, like, there's they don't make Visconti pins that fit in this opening. I guess the Van Goghs would fit in there. But like the Homo sapiens, there's no way I'm fitting a Homo sapiens in there. Not that I would dip it in the bottle anyway, but... Interesting, right? This is a cool bottle to play with. Like this is a cool bottle you'd kind of want on your desk. Yeah, no way you can fit a Homo sapiens in this. No way. Any of the any of the bigger pins, any of the piston fillers. Oh, the Ackerman bottles are fantastic. Waterman bottles are great. I it's just a classic, good classic bottle. So this is an ink I'm more likely to review because I review enough of these inks. So I'll probably send this to one of the review crew and then I'll probably do the sepia myself. Lamy has a huge opening, but it's super shadow. Yeah, they do at least have a little bubble at the bottom, but that doesn't really help that much. Lamy bottles are trick bottles, right? Sorry, once I saw the, the leak, I am obsessed with it now. All right, there we go. Better. We'll have to get some a wet paper towel to deal with it. All right, what color is this? Here's your ink swab of the day. It's a greenish, greenish brown sepia. What color is sepia, Chad? Um, I like the box. I like how they put the little color on there. Same, same here, Slumberland Studio. I actually removed the ink bottles I had up here because I was actually worried about them being, even though they're not in direct sunlight, I keep everything else in a closet. And I was like, why have these cool inks up here? I'll have, once I empty some bottles, we'll have, to, uh, we'll have to do it. All right, also sepia. Or maybe cafe crema. All right, there we go. That's that. That's that. Let's see what else we got. Incubara. Where were these from? Keep away from children. Czechoslovakia. Czech handmade fountain pen ink. Looks very, 
very used. Ooh, ooh, nice seal on this. Okay, this is crimson. I think I bought like three of these. So I'll probably send one to everybody to to review. Oh, like I'm gonna. This is gonna. This is like a snap cap. Like you'll know if it's open. Like I'm gonna have to break this. Kind of break the seal. Nice. Yeah, I bought this. This one was called Crimson, but the sample was more like of a magenta y. Czech Republic. Sorry, what did I say? Did I say Czechoslovakia? Czech Republic. My bad. <clears throat> Thank you for correcting me. So, yeah, I'm actually might. We might sample this ink because it's called Crimson. And I would expect to be more red, but it was definitely more. Um, magenta -y in the swab, which is what made me pick it up. So we got a few of these. Foggy blue, apparent again, blue theme. <clears throat> Deer brown, that looks cool. This is Inkibara, Inkibara from the Czech Republic, from Van S. Pins. Yep, and Pale Violet. These labels aren't that much different. Is that it? That might be it. Yep, all right, good. That's it. All right, so we got four of these because they were new to me. Um, we'll send these out to the review crew. Since I opened Crimson, I think... This is where those color ring dippers would be nice for swatching on the fly. I should do, get some of those. So let's see. I have one Q-tip here. I have my... We could do a couple things real quick. You can't tease with new ink and not swatch. Well, I have to reship some of this stuff, and I like the fact that these are sealed still. Plus, I don't have all my good paper ready. What's in here? Oh, I found my hard copy of Bone Reaver's Orchard. I know you can't see that in this camera. Let's see what we got here. Here's me cutting out a bunch of stuff. All right. We'll do crimson. We'll check out these. We'll check out these three since they're already kind of open. <coughs> so look, this is where I like test stuff out, cut pages out. This is Tomoe River, original Tomoe River paper. So let's see what we got here. So this is Inkybara Crimson. Morning, afternoon, evening. Oh, it's pretty crimson-y. Like I'd say it's red, but it's pinkish. Kind of like that. I really am singing Breakfast at Tiffany's now, so thanks for that. Bright swatching is sometimes hard for me to determine. Oh, it's impossible to see. Any swatch through any computer screen is gonna be inaccurate. It's really hard to say, to, to tell you how accurate they are. Brad Art redeemed. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious if it dries a different color. That's a great color. Because it's more, it's got a lot of pink in it. which I do like. All right, so that's that. So all of these, one thing I, li I like about all these inks, I was concerned or curious when I opened this one that it wasn't like that full, but I'm glad these aren't just like max capacity to the limit full. They're 60, 60 milliliters, but there's these are probably like 70 milliliter bottles, so there's some space in here. It's not bursting at the seams.
Yeah, Rattler Gen. I think it's more of that color than just like a true crystal. But Brad, the value, right? I really, I, I don't love this cap. I don't know what it is to be. Oh yeah, and and also yeah, swatches don't translate to pens, right? Your your writing from a nib is very different. Like cotton swabs are literally the worst accuracy. <laughs> They're just easy to get a lot of ink on and easy to clean up. But yeah, they the colors don't always translate, don't rarely translate to the nib. So this is, what did we say, Appetite? That's two great colors. Like this color, you can't even look at this through the screen. Like this is extraordinarily inaccurate from what I see in person. Got to get you an artisanally bent letter opener. How can I do that? So I have this. Yeah, the cap feels cheap, to be honest. That's why I don't like Papa Lockin, is it feels cheap. Yeah, y'all can't even look at this color. The color y'all see looks like Mike's Cheerio Water Bus. This is an extremely blue color in person, not green. And it looks green in the camera that I see here. Really, really, really pretty color. Why does it feel cheap? Because it's, I don't know, it's like thin and matte. And I don't know, it just doesn't feel like substantial like the black caps that they used. It's fine, like I wouldn't care. I have Brian Chu been with them for me to send you one one day. I would actually genuinely like that. Cause I used to do, I used to use this for ink samples sometimes. Um, yeah, this is an awesome color that y'all cannot see. We'll have to, this is one that's got to come up to the face cam and you'll see the difference. No, it's not, it's not mouse desk. Do not assume this color. Because you'll see why here momentarily. See the difference now? So that color you saw in the desk camera is not accurate for this blue. But like for the crimson, it's pretty close. It does not like this blue. And that happens sometimes. So again... Um, it's brighter than my shirt. It's more turquoisey. It's a very turquoisey color. So yeah, but the crimson is not that far off. I'd say the crimson is completely accurate. Like what I see on my page is represented well on the camera. Ooh, what happened there? Hi. I see a darkness. Great, I ruined everything now. There we go. And then we have the Kakamori. We'll use this last. So, yeah, I mean, the Appetite's a great color. It's just a color that we've seen a lot of in a lot of uh, a lot of other brands. Like this is not this is not an ex exceedingly unique color. Which is fine. Like, it doesn't have to be. I'm just saying, like, it doesn't have, like, any features. It doesn't have shimmer or sheen or anything like that that's going to make you go, ooh, ah, appetite. Turquoisey is a, is a great screen name. So this Visconti, let's see what we can get here out of this with the Takamori. Like, even this nib is going to be a problem in this thing. It's going to get all around here probably. Oops, too far. Oh well, that's fine. This is a great color.
So this is one that's pretty standard, pretty straightforward. You just have to decide, is it worth the money relative to other pretty straightforward brownish sepias you can get? You know, not a lot of shading or color variation in there. I think my favorite of the three is the crimson, to be perfectly honest. Waterproof, certainly not. I don't think any of these inks are waterproof. That in, in this batch of inks. None of them were marketed that way. Whether they're off-label waterproof, I couldn't tell you. But they're not, none of these are marketed as such. Yeah, the more this dries, the less I like it. It's, is that sepia true? Yeah. It's a pretty rich brown. It goes on light and dries darker. I'd say it's pretty accurate. The only one, this one is not accurate. I think these are at least in the ballpark. And I can put it up here. I'll swap it with you. Like, it's just a very straight up brown color. I don't know that it's particularly interesting. Interesting. Like, it's fine. Yeah, it's a nice rich brown. Definitely dries darkier, darker. I'm curious if it's more sepia with a drier nib. I mean, any thinner application is going to be lighter, right? I do love the inaccurate camera color of Appetite. I've seen that with this shade of blue before. It was better lighter. I agree. Right when it went down, that's the color I wanted. Like right when it went down wet, that's my happy sepia place. Now we're just into straight, straight up kind of brown. It might not even be light brown. It might just be like straight up brown, like teddy bear brown. So, like, it's it's fine, but is it $35 fine? Yeah, I'd rather, rather try something else for half the price, right? Like, how much are those inks? Yeah, these inks are uh, $15 for 60 milliliters, the Inkabara inks. So, it definitely dried dark. It's it's about a shade away from milk chocolate. That's about how dark it's going. That's it, Brad. You have to make a brown ink next time. I, I do the Sailor Tea Time Fika coffee is a darkish brown ink that I love. So in a lot of the a lot of this, I don't know if y'all are this way, the marketing gets into my head, right? It's called seep if they called this if they called this brown. I would have a different opinion of this, right? I would feel differently about this. And I know that's like not fair to say, right? It doesn't seem fair to say that, but. Oh, I don't have the, I don't have my, I keep the, uh, the, the sailor tea time um, inked up in a different pen. And it's darker, the it's darker, but it's brown, right? It comes out brown, but it's dark, it's great. Birmingham Antique Sepia is my favorite. Do I have that one? Half the time I'm attracted to an ink because of the name. How's your appetite for this ink? Sorry. I need to send that ink away so I can stop making uh, stupid appetite jokes. When everybody talks about Fika, I laugh out loud. Why did I miss something? Oh, I see. Okay, it's a. Uh, 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 I see now. I have reply. <laughs> I see your earlier comment. I actually ordered the Diamine Kopi Oka. Oh, really? F Bullet. I would love to see, uh, like an ink swatch of that. Yeah, that Birmingham Antique CP. I need to try. It was a little bit greener, right? I don't. I need to re-ink re -ink some Birmingham inks. 
I really like those things. I need I need a uh, I need a pen cleaning and re-inking. Mini Ginger Snap X. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. So yeah. Um, Vin Visconti Sepia is essentially flat brown, which is good. Like, there is nothing wrong with this color, other than it's not sepia. Yeah, I, I and yeah. Let me know what you think about it because I thought that was super super interesting ink. Like that was uh, that was the all the things ink. I don't know why, but Birmingham like to feather on Tomoe River. Which ones, the standard ones or a different one? Like uh, because they have the different formulations. Is it the standard one or the everlasting or I don't know. There's like four or five different. And I know some of them don't perform well on some place, on some papers. Definitely. I've definitely heard that. <laughs> Think it's the lubricated? Yeah, gotcha. You can't name something the name of a color than not have it be that color. <laughs> they rename them again. The inks? The formulation? The ink formulations? I haven't, I haven't been on the site in ages. But yeah, sepia is the one that we always joke about is, okay, I want a sepia ink. Okay, what color do you think sepia is? And the, the, the person who the joke came from was they wanted a maroon ink. I have the original one, so they say traditional formula. Anyone tried Leonardo sepia? No. If Birmingham seems to make their lives difficult with the inks. <laughs> How readable is the antique sepia in an EF nib? Pretty re I would use it. I would use it regularly. It's like, what did I have recently that I thought was very legible? It's very similar to that. I just test, tested something out that I wasn't sure was going to work in a fine nib, and it's kind of along that eroded bronze line. What, what was the review I did Monday? Maybe I did the Monday. Oh, yeah, the uh, it is Zora. The, so the sepia... Reminds me of this color. Um, excuse me, the eroded bronze reminds me of this shade here. I don't have a bigger picture of that. And eh, that edge. That's what eroded bronze looks like to me in like an extra fine nib. I don't know if I'm going to buy any more Birmingham's. It's annoying to try and review things when they keep changing the names. They do it a lot. It's like it's like trying to do all the things all the time it's like we're not even settled in with the last thing <laughs> i do like the inks though i've had good i've had good results with the inks i've tested but it is hard to manage when they keep changing constantly it was like why why keep doing it all right so yeah this is um this is kind of what I think of a rotor bronze. <laughs> Did I review a rotor bronze? I don't even remember. I might have a. All right, let's do one more giveaway here. I did do a review. So yeah, this is in a Diplomat Extra Fine nib. Let's see if I can find it. So this is a Yovo Extra Fine nib. I thought it was ex extremely legible, almost said illegible. <laughs> So, it's not too far off from what I was showing you there. So, yeah, it to me, it definitely, as someone who uses the extra fine nibs, it is definitely legible. And I don't think it's that far off. 
it's darker. So that's the Edizora, and that's the eroded bronze. So they're both that kind of grayish blue. There you go. All right, let's do one more giveaway. Let's do this. Let's do a new product giveaway. Let's do one of the uh, one of the check inks, the Inkabara. So I'm gonna keep crimson. Well, I guess you could pick crimson if you wanted, but I've opened it and you've dipped it, but uh, and dipped it, but you can pick any of these. We'll do a giveaway, and you can pick. I'm not gonna sample any of the other ones. You can pick your your ink here out of these four. So that'll be good. Let's do that for a giveaway. So you can pick out one of these. It's always good to do something new. All right. And the only, we don't have to worry about ink freezing right now because we're not shipping to Antarctica and I'm not sure I'll ship it to anywhere in Australia that's cold enough right now. I don't ever ship to South America, so I think we're good on the inks and the ink shipping right now. All right. The giveaway is now open, exclamation point raffle, and you can pick out one of these inks. One of these inks, even the crimson that I was going to keep for myself, but if you want it, you can have it. Saber, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. And then we're going to probably wrap it after this, I'm thinking. I don't know. What else do you want to talk about? I do have a few minutes, but it's been a busy morning. Mike surprised me with that joke. I didn't think he'd go there, but he did. It's not like him, which made it even funnier. Hello, Katine. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate y'all joining me today. We're gonna wrap it up soon. I think next week we're gonna have to we're gonna have to start testing out more of this stuff that I have. Right? I still have one more order coming in from Gold Spot, but I'm holding. Uh, they they were out of one of the nib sizes. So they're getting that for me. So it might be late next week. Brad, how do you like your Ezra Brooke Needlepoint using it more? I really enjoy it. It's pretty crispy, which I, li I like. So. Musgrave sells hats. I have one. Kaveco sells sunglasses. I will not own those. Are there any other stationary brands that sell apparel? Only half joking. What do y'all got? Y'all got anything, chat? What do you think? Leonardo Memento Zero Grandes are too long and the grip is too skinny. I've seen the pins that you make, Skogsy, and I understand why you say that. But no, they're almost too big for me. <laughs> so it's, yeah, that is that is a good hot take because I, I definitely disagree. Brad Pin and it capped? Who knows? I can't, I can't. I'm having trouble working so far ahead, <laughs> right? Like it's my 15th anniversary blog anniversary in November. I have no plans right now. And it's like almost already too late. Um, it's almost already too late for me to plan to, to have stuff ready for November. Like it's, it's overwhelming to think about all that stuff. Join late. What team had is that team spoke pen. <laughs> so yeah I need to think about if I'm going to do any 15th anniversary stuff I have nothing and it's just so overwhelming to think about all that stuff oh there was uh, Toby yeah I can do I can do the Pinac 15th anniversary stuff for the 16 year anniversary would you say that foggy blue is a bit Amarillo or more like Con Pecky? I have no idea because I haven't opened it who can say? Who can? No, nah, no, nah, no. Pre no, it's just stuff I think about all the time. But then I just get myself overwhelmed, right? But it's like I need to do it. I, I want to do it. But then, like, 
then I don't do it. And then tomorrow happens, then I don't do it. And then all of a sudden the dates come closer. I don't have to worry. I shouldn't have to worry about the dates, right? I really don't. Oh, I bought the Ebbets uh, Musgrave hat. The Tombow is on the list. So yeah, I would love to do an Ebbets um, pen addict hat. It would be sweet. That's that's like at the top of the list. Like I have a list of like that type of ideas, like the merch ideas. I think that's number one on the list. Chat room brainstorm for 15 year celebration? No, <laughs> not today. We can do it another day when I'm ready to like actually think about that. It like breaks my head to, to uh to think about it right now. Like, cause I have some lists of things that I've done. All right, let's pick a winner. So y'all can pick an ink. Winner is Panda Beach. Recent winner, not first time winner. Like it, multiple win. This is the first multiple time winner we've had in all week probably. Yeah, the um, the Ebbets hat would be sweet. I could totally do those. And they'd be like 50 or $60, but I'd still do them. It would be worth it. It would be worth it. Where are you at, Panda Beach? I mean, I know physically where you're at because I've mailed stuff to you before. But like, where are you at in this chat? Because I need you to pick an ink. You must be present to win. There you are. You'd like the blue one? All right, foggy blue. And then you can report back. Whoa, you can report back and tell us what color it is. It looks lighter. It looks Conpecky-ish. Maybe I'll pull up the swatch real quick. All right, the blue is you. The blue is you. Um, I'm curious now. Uh, foggy blue. Because it doesn't seem very foggy to me, right? Seems bright. There you go. Matches my shirt. For the brown too, for the deer. Yeah, we'll do the deer brown. I think um, Van S pens, the swatches are pretty representative. Like I think they do a good job getting the right colors in there. So, pretty cool. It probably looks like that appetite, honestly. I know the appetite's a little more green, I think. This is less green. It's very pretty, very pretty. So then the other one is deer, deer brown. Let's see, let's look at the Visconti sepia one. Oh, that's a wild color. If that's accurate, that's pretty cool. Little yellowish brown. I'm down with that. I'm down with that brown. Yeah. That is a funky brown. I'm 100% down with that. And then we have, I want to look up this Visconti sepia. See how bad my swatch is. They may not have it yet. I think this is a new. Yeah, they don't have a swatch yet. No swatch yet. So. I don't think it has shimmer. I think it's just got kind of like a different kind of base, like an underlying base of uh, yellow. Excuse me. <clears throat> All right. All right, chat, anything else? I think that's probably a wrap for today. I'm at least getting my camera out the way so I can see my screen. Once a color gets digitized in the computer, you only get a general idea. Yeah, for sure. No homework this weekend, neighbor villain. Just use your stuff. How about your homework is to use stuff and then just tell me yes or no that you used your stationery, right? That's always the most important thing. Like, you know, if you buy something, use it. That is always the most important to me. Got my Lamy pen win. You're welcome. Thanks for the suggestions on the Decimo. I would like a report back. You have, Alessandra has homework. <laughs> I 
I think you need to get in. You might even need to soak the front end of that pen because you might actually have ink behind the trap door. That's not like if you're flushing, I don't know it's going to work as well. Right? So I think you need to do a little bit something else. Everyone go home and do a DIY nib grind on a cheap pen. Wow. You're brave. Y'all are braver than me. <laughs> Darrow, no. <laughs> I like that. No, I will not be doing that. All right. Let's toss it over to Takube. I don't know what they're, oh, they're about to unbox something. We got a brew crew. We got some brew crew streaming going over here. If you aren't following the stationary, uh, stationary brew, brew fam, you gotta go follow the fam. All right, let's do this. Judy's opening happening mail. That was a huge box. That was a giant box. So yeah, let's go see what we got. More unboxing. Volume warning, she gets loud. All right, headphone headphone uh, listeners, be careful. All right. Y'all have a great weekend or rest of your week. Have a good Friday. Have a good rest of Thursday. Have a good Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Use your stuff. That's your homework. We will have homework. I just want reports back that you use stuff. I don't care what it is, just that you did it. Right? Write something. Ink swatch. Do something fun. Get out of your head and onto the page. Love y'all. Bye.